This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight. So delighted to be with Frank Warren here in London. Just had a lovely lunch there. Yeah, Milo, uh, I think my second time here, isn't it? Yeah, very enjoyable. Did you enjoy it? I certainly did you, did you? Absolutely, yeah, thank you for the invite. But um, yeah, obviously a massive uh, day today, well massive day yesterday, but massive day today obviously to announce the, the new broadcast partners with The Zone. Um, yeah, real, real milestone um, for many reasons. Um, obviously, part well not partnering, but on the same broadcast platform as Eddie Hearn. Um, yeah, a lot of reasons, a lot of factors that go into it. But um, yeah, massive, massive uh, day for Queensbury. Yeah, we're delighted. It's a great partnership with us and The Zone. Um, we will be doing some really big shows on there as of the 1st of April onwards um, and be broadening our horizons. We'll be doing shows from various around the world as well so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. More dates than we've been doing in the past so it's all pluses for everybody. Absolutely and for yourself obviously um, you know, previously in the past, there would have been, you know, there sort of, especially in a couple of years ago, you would have been a bit critical of the zone. Um, but for yourself, I guess, as the years have gone on, as the times have changed, what I guess led to maybe like a U-turn as such to sort of go on the zone and, and be convinced to sort of be that as your broadcasting partner? Well, I think they've shown over the last few years they've invested in some really good management. People that I've worked with in the past at BT, IMG, and so forth, some really good people. Shay, there. The, um, who's the boss, he's, been, he's great, and Pete, um, Mike Ridout, Alex, all of them, they're all, all, all top, qual top quality operators, so I'm delighted that from that perspective, and that's been a big thing for me, and also reading, meeting Solène Blatnevik, who's uh, the major financier behind the whole thing, and his vision and their vision has, has obviously given us um, a lot of a lot of impulse to do this deal. We really wanted to do the deal. Have them listen to where they're at. Their global brand is built up certainly since as you say in the last couple of years it's changed in a big way. And uh, in those years when we focused on building in the UK the strongest promotional business, we've done that. And now we're moving on to the next stage and the next level. And you've been boxing, you've been promoting boxing for you know, many, many years now. And I'm sure in that time, the broadcasting landscape has changed so much into a position. Is it to position, to, to position that it's in now? Um, yeah, I guess. What do you sort of make of the whole broadcasting landscape in the UK as you've seen it? I guess grow throughout the years. You know, you've been working with Sky, TNT, and now with the Zone. It's been. I mean, you've experienced it all. So, uh, how much would you say it has changed? Well, it's evolved in a big way. You know, when I first got into boxing, I got I, when I, my very first show was on BBC television and in those days they were the only game in town and I only got in there because I forced the issue by winning a purse bid between uh, Clinton McKenzie and Steve Early and then after that I, I sort of really worked hard because they, it was a closed shop with a cartel on BBC not only that they had all the venues tied up in uh, Wembley these were the venues back then Wembley there was no O2s or anything like that um, Albert Hall and even York Hall, you couldn't get into them. So that was a tough thing. And then I got into ITV. In those days, TV was, any boxing on TV was shown on a 24 hour delay basis. So I fought to get live TV with ITV so we could get live boxing. All the major events took place on a Tuesday night and were shown on a Wednesday. And we got them to do a, get them into Saturday night boxing as well as the Wednesday nights live. So that was a big change, and then I was there for I don't know 15 years, and then went off to went off to uh, Sky when I only had three million subscribers. Everybody said that was the end of boxing; it's dead. It won't. It, and we built Ricky Hatton on Sky TV, which is a huge thing. He was built on Sky. We did the first pay-per-views, which enabled us to bring the big events over to the UK, rather than everybody having to go to the UK, go to America. And I've been, you know, I've, done, I've dealt with every broadcaster over the years, all the different broadcasters. And um, we are where we are now. We've wound up where we are now. When I went to BT, they had no boxing. We built a boxing business on BT that then became TNT. And for me, this is a, we're now evolving into a different situation, which is the, which I believe is the future of boxing. 
For yourself, when you look at the other broadcasters you work with, when you look at the likes of, of TNT and you look at Sky, they've obviously got, they're invested in heavily in other sports, you know, look at TNT and Sky, both had stuff like the Ashes, obviously Premier League football being a main one. When you look at the zone, their main selling point would be boxing. And is there a concern for yourself with... Okay. Around the world, that's not the case. Like this, they've got La Liga, they're big in Japan. So all those different countries, when you're building up what we're trying to do, is, is going to help us. And for us, you know, look, boxing's a success story in this country. You was at the show at Wembley. You was at the show a couple of years ago at Wembley. The last two shows at Wembley sold out for the Tysons fight. There was 460,000 people in the queue waiting for tickets, wanting to buy a ticket. There is a massive appetite for boxing. So it's up to us as a promoter to work to make people know where they can watch the best boxing. And between us, with as Matram and us, I think we're the two biggest promoters out there, in the, certainly in the UK, maybe in the world at the moment. You look at um, Oscar De La Hoya in America. There's some really big, big, big fights, maybe, but we can make between our companies that will attract viewers. You know, they have they have got their, their numbers, and I say, Salem Blanick. You look at his business, what he done with Warner Music and so forth. Now he's he's a, a very astute business, and he believes in this, and I believe in it. And my son George is there. That's why we that, why we made the move we made. So for yourself, there's no concerns when it comes to that, like. Well, I guess that exposure when it comes to like the casual audience in a way. Well, the casual audience is attracted to big, big events. They're not attracted to the smaller events. Smaller events, you know, being very realistic about but what we do to build, build the fighters. But that's our job to get out there and do what we do as promoters. I mean, you can look at it in a different way. You look at, you're here today. You know, how many years ago? I never do none of this stuff. I do a press conference with the press. It's changed. The media changed. The way people consume what they watch has changed. And you're you're talking like an old fogey, by the way. You're saying we're moving forward all the time. I'm 72. I've evolved. I've gone from 24-hour delay to live, from closed circuit TV to live TV. All these things over the years. They they all of it is it all evolves and comes through. And as I say, I believe in a big way in the, in the people who are behind the zone. The people who they got there now, I believe in this. And that's why we have made our commitment to them. And we're good at what we do. We're good at bringing talent through, development and so forth. And I believe between that, all of us as a team, is to go from strength to strength. That's completely fair enough. And it, that brings me on to, a, I guess, a final point from myself. And, and Simon Jordan went on, on, on the show with, with, uh, with um, Jim White today. Um, and he spoke about the deal. And, uh, he spoke about the deal, and his, he expressed concerns that the, la the sort of the less broadcast in the sport hinders like the exposure of the sport. And the less broadcast in the sport, like the more monopoly that gets paid, is a, it could be a hindrance for the sport. So I guess that that brings me on to the point. Like, so as you say, there's no hindrance when there are if there are less broadcasters in the sport, as Simon was saying. You know, obviously, with his great experience of boxing and broadcast of boxing I mean you know do we listen to that I just told you what happened when I went from ITV to, to Sky it's dead boxing's finished is it of course it is you know Simon Jordan's entitled to his opinion for me his opinion and what he's got to say about how boxing's evolving and whatever I couldn't give a flying toss about because Everything he said about boxing up to now has been completely and utterly wrong. Everything, not one thing, everything, what he says we should be doing. Fair enough, I'm there. Like me telling him how to run Crystal Palace. Completely fair enough. Frank, as always, a pleasure. Thank you for the invite today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Top man. Thank you. Cheers.